Acrylamide is a food contaminant. It's not present in the raw ingredients that go to produce foods, but is instead a natural byproduct of cooking and is directly linked to the Maillard reaction, which is responsible for color and flavor development. It forms via a reaction between certain amino acids and sugars, which are naturally present in raw ingredients such as coffee beans, cereals and potatoes. Acrylamide cannot be measured in real time, and even within a finished batch of products there can be significant variations in levels. To reduce both overall levels and variability, manufacturers need to implement mitigation measures and demonstrate improved control over raw materials and production. Unfortunately, there is no single measure that would enable its complete elimination. The new regulation makes it explicit that acrylamide should be managed as part of a food business's food safety management system. Manufacturers should therefore apply a variety of mitigation tools to reduce levels in their products following the principle of as low as reasonably achievable or ALARA for short. The tools which are specifically applicable for potato crisp and snack manufacturers are outlined within Annex 1 of the regulation. Not all the tools will be applicable or effective for every product, but at every stage manufacturers should be able to show that they've taken sufficient steps to manage the issue and to demonstrate how the controls have been considered and, where appropriate, how they have been applied. As well as covering potato crisps from fresh sliced potatoes, the regulation also covers legislative requirements for dough-based potato crisps, snacks, crackers and other dough-based potato products. For each individual product, manufacturers will have a specific design, for example reflecting taste, aroma, appearance, size and texture, and as part of this, design recipe can play an important role. As with whole potatoes, manufacturers should work with their suppliers to ensure a low level of reducing sugars in their dehydrated potato ingredients. Levels may still vary during the course of the year, reflecting seasonality and regionality of the raw ingredients, but it is important to agree a target and to keep levels low and in compliance with the legislation. Manufacturers should maintain records to show that either they or their supplier have tested product prior to use and that these meet their specifications for the individual product they are producing. The legislation does not define a minimum percentage potato content for a finished product, but potato ingredients may have a higher acrylamide forming potential than some other starches, for example rice. However, these other starch ingredients may still have a high acrylamide forming potential, and manufacturers should be careful that they are not increasing the overall sugar content through use of these extra ingredients. For some products, it may be possible to partially replace potato ingredients with these other starches. However, this may not always be technically possible due to the properties of the starch, which is an important factor in some expanded snacks. Use of other starches might also impact upon the sensory properties of the finished product and could even introduce other new unacceptable hazards, for example gluten.
wet doughs may allow a manufacturer to add ingredients or use certain processing aids to help manage the formation of acrylamide. The first one to mention is asparaginase. It works by converting the enzyme asparagine, which is naturally present in potatoes, to aspartic acid and ammonia. Asparagine is one of the precursors to acrylamide formation, so reducing asparagine reduces the potential for acrylamide to form. Asparaginase can be very effective, but it needs to be used under specific conditions, including time, temperature and the pH of the dough mix. Asparaginase is not suitable for dry doughs or for fresh sliced potato crisps, and care should be taken when reformulating as aspartic acid can have a strong taste. Manufacturers may also choose to use acid to restrict acrylamide formation. Research has shown that doughs which have a low pH level have a lower acrylamide formation. However, acids also act to inhibit the Maillard reaction, and so the texture and appearance of the product may also change. Addition of citric or asorbic acid to some products can also lead to strong off flavours, and the potential for success is very variable and dependent on product design. Lastly, use of calcium salts in doughs works by tying up glucose, a reducing sugar, and so will also act to disrupt the Maillard reaction. As with other processing and co-ingredients, high levels can generate undesirable product attributes. In this case, bitter off flavours and brittle textures. Food business operators are required to maintain records to demonstrate controls and in the event that a maximum temperature is higher than 175 degrees Celsius, then the business needs to provide data demonstrating that the level of acrylamide in the finished product is below the benchmark level specified in Annex 4. As with fresh sliced potato crisps, alongside raw materials and temperature, the other critical factor for manufacturers of potato dough-based snacks is moisture control. Manufacturers may choose to monitor moisture levels using inline or at least near-infrared or NIR moisture meters. Moisture measurement at the exit of the fryer can be used in a closed loop control of the fryer to optimize moisture levels. This will result in greater product consistency and less waste material. Manufacturers can additionally use inline NIR following the application of seasoning. As well as inline technologies, many manufacturers may undertake additional offline confirmatory analysis, most commonly carried using loss on drying methods. Music